Welcome everybody to a brand new show here on the EP Sports Network called The Rebound. I am your host Ace Costa, and on this show we're going to talk everything that has to do with basketball, whether it be pros, college, high school, maybe some little league. I don't know. We'll we'll debate about it, but for episode number 1, we had to pull out all the stops and we got one of our very own famous El Pasoans already on the move. She's done a lot already covering, you know, multiple sports. You can catch her for the Rio Grande Vipers, Rio Grande Valley Vipers in the NBA G League. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to introduce my friend, April Marie Aguilar. April, welcome. Hi, thank you. That was so nice. I feel like I was receiving like an award. Hey, you Very are. Was, nice. you, well, you do have a uh, you do have a ring with the with the Vipers, right? Or a title, correct? Yes, two so currently two. with with them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. During Two. my time here. So, and then, of course, uh, last year, uh, like you said, they unfortunately lost in the championship, but still, that's they made it to the round again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They are the winningest team in the G League. They have four championships. So, I've been lucky to be a part of, of two of those championships. Um, my dad, I think, is the one that gets the most excited because, you know, we, we get a ring along with the team. So, I tend to always order them in his size because I'm like, I'm never going to wear that thing. It's, it's so big. <laughs> I'm like, you can wear it. So he's the one walking around. If you ever see my dad in El Paso wearing a, a ginormous G League championship ring, you know where it came from. Right. Hey, hey, the hardware is there. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. So obviously the G, uh, the Vipers are affiliated with the Houston Rockets. Um, tell right. people tell people about it that don't really know about the G league. Cause some people don't realize that, you know, the NBA has this nice developmental, you know, league to help prep right. their athletes on there. Uh, so give, give, give folks a little bit insight on, on what the G league does. Yeah. So the G league has actually come a long way. Um, it's here, here recently, it's been called the G league. I want to say it's about two years now that it's now, um, got its name changed to the Gatorade league, AKA the G league. Um, but a lot of folks, you know, a lot of older folks um, recognize the G League as the D League because that's what it was once called, the D League, um, representing the Development League, which, as you mentioned, um, is right um, underneath the NBA. Um, it is it is a Development League. You know, the G League has come a long way. Unfortunately, there was a time when people would kind of I guess, label the G League as almost like a demotion. Um, When players were sent there, they were, they felt like they were being, you know, um, shunned upon and so forth. And now it's just taken a whole new meaning. Um, As you mentioned, it's a developing development league that's basically helping these players um, ultimately reach their goal of making it to the NBA. Um, A lot of people, unfortunately, fortunately uh, make it to the NBA, but they don't, they cannot stay in the NBA. Hence why you have a lot of players also go overseas. Um, But then you have some players who say, you know what, my dream is to play in the NBA. Like that's ultimately what I want to do. And the reality is that now, if you do want the opportunity of playing to the playing in the NBA, the G league is definitely your best bet. That's where you're going to get the repetitions. That's where you're going to get the playing time. That's where you're going to get the feel and style of the NBA pace, which is ideal. And so, as you mentioned, the Vipers are the affiliate team to the Houston Rockets. So we basically mirror our affiliate team when it comes to plays, when it comes to pace. Um, And all of the NBA teams are exactly the same. There's only one NBA team currently that does not have a G League affiliate. I'm gonna do a little trivia. Do you know what team that is? Only one, you said, right? Only one, yes. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say Miami. No, they have a G League team. They do, okay. They do, they do. You get one more shot. Um, I know it's not Toronto because, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Sik- Sakai, my African Indian name from New, New Mexico State yeah, played there. Yeah, Siak. Yes, um, 905 Raptors, correct. Let, let's see, let's see. Okay, I know the Warriors. Ooh, this, is a, this is a tough one. Uh, I want to say Boston. No, Boston has a team. So it's wow. actually the Phoenix Suns. 
Phoenix, Phoenix, really? Yes, the Phoenix Suns are the only NBA team that does not have a G League team, which is so funny because they used to have a G League team. Um, but then ownership came in and, and they completely got rid of it. But they are currently the only team that, that does not have an affiliate team. And it's so funny because we have a team in the G League, which is the uh, Capitanes de la Ciudad de Mexico, who do not have an affiliate NBA so they team. Should, they, should, they should just partner up already. Right? That's right. exactly right. what people say. They're like, guys, this is this is a perfect match. So we'll see what happens. But that's a little bit about the way it works. Um, more importantly, I'd like to emphasize that every G League team does have what is known as two-way players. So in the past, every G League team had two two-way players. This is actually the first season that the G League has added a third two-way player. And the way that these two-way players work is basically they split time between um, our affiliate team, the Houston Rockets, and they split time with us, the RGV Vipers. Um, and their contract is a little different than the rest of the teams. Um, but again, they they're on those two way contracts because they basically have everything it takes to play in the NBA. They just have to fine tune, um, you know, some skills, continue to develop and so forth. Um, hence why they're called two way players and two way contracts. And especially, you know, roster spots as well on 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 the main squad. It's it's limited. So that's good that they can bounce back and forth, you know. Yeah, picture, for picture sure. like p- picture it like uh, MLBs with their 40 man roster. Right. Mm-hmm. You, know, you got the, the 25 that are active, but, you know, you still got the 40 that are still in that caliber. But that's good. Exactly. Though, right? that, that's good. So for folks that haven't been able to go out to a to a G League game because there's San Antonio and, and Rio Grande uh, Vipers. Uh, are, well, Houston and San Antonio have the teams. So they're kind of right. in driving distance here for folks here in El Paso and say Texas. Um, how, how how exciting are those games? I mean, like you said, you got. NBA caliber talent that is playing right there, like they can be called up one day, you know, to the to the mm-hmm. to the next the the next level. But how exciting are those games? I mean, they're extremely exciting. I think again, the G League has come a long way. Just the growth in itself, and then not only that, but now you all now you also have the addition of the G League Ignite, which is which is you know a team in itself that a lot of people like to label as like a super team. So you have players that are basically draft eligible who will be playing in the NBA one day. You already have um, players in the NBA currently who are products of the G League, for example, Jalen Green. Um, so it's it's absolutely phenomenal. It's something that, uh, you know, can't really be explained. I'll, I'll speak on, on the Vipers primarily because obviously I work here and so forth, but we take a lot of pride in just replicating an NBA style game as much as possible from the entertainment, from our season ticket booklets, from, you know, the community outreach that we do. Like we literally mirror the NBA. Now I can't speak, you know, for all G League teams because, you know, some of these G League teams do have smaller venues and so forth. But I think really the G League is just for those people who are just passionate about the game of basketball. And if you're those type of people that are always looking to connect with people who, you know, aspire to become somebody, or something or make it to the NBA, kind of like that get it out the mud type of like attitude, I think you'll really resonate with players in the in the G League and not just players, right? Because I think that's important to also um, keep in mind that like the same way players are trying to make it to the NBA, reporters are trying to make it to the NBA, coaches are trying to make it to the NBA, athletic trainers are trying to make it to the NBA, like, and they're using the G League, you know, as a catalyst to get there. So it's just like a proving ground for for everybody, really. And, it, and it's great because, like you said, those opportunities, you know, creating those new opportunities for everybody to make it to that next level. And you're mm-hmm. a clear example for that, you know, coming from El Paso taking that trip and risk down to the Valley and look at where you're at here Two two I championship know. rings later you got <laughs> to call for, for folks that don't realize you, you got to head out there to the NBA all-star game. It was in Chicago. Yes. Be part, be, be, part of, be part of an all women kind of crew things. Uh, give, give, give people a little insight on that 
crazy experience, even though it was a couple of years ago, yes. but still a crazy experience. Yes. Okay. So those were actually two different experiences. So um, I did get to participate in All Star Weekend or in, when it was hosted in Chicago. Absolutely phenomenal event. Um, I was actually there at the time, though, with MBA Cares. Um, we were putting together like these massive clinics, um, these basketball clinics that were happening during the time there. But um, I did get to meet a lot of MBA players. And, and it's so funny because um, I never actually realized like how massive these players are obviously you see them on tv but to actually see them in person for example joel Embiid has to be the biggest human being i've ever seen in my life like he was sitting on this couch and he got up and like my whole body was like one of his arms like he <laughs> he was insane he was huge but you know just and, being and folks able don't realize april is tall April is not no, short. He's no, he's massive. April, April, he's April is massive. tall, so so it's for for him to be that big. It's it's crazy. No, and when he spoke, I felt like like everything around him like trembled because his voice was so deep. So I was like, oh my god, he's huge. But him, James Harden, Ben Simmons. Um, Did you get to see Luca? Well, no, I didn't get to see Luca. No, 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 no. Um, who else? Um, I'm trying to think. Well, ben Simmons, same time. No, no, no. Um, Kawhi Leonard. Okay. Kawhi Leonard was there. Yes. Um, because you know that hey. obviously every All Star only certain players go and so forth. I also got to meet a lot of WNBA players, which is a really cool experience. So that was when I went to All Star Weekend, and then, um, it wasn't last year, but the year prior, I was able to be a part of um, an all women's broadcast for the San Antonio Spurs. So. Um, every month of March, the NBA celebrates Women History Month. Uh, so I have a really good relationship with the producer out with the San Antonio Spurs. I've kind of developed that relationship over time. And, and he kind of reached out to me with the opportunity to be a part of it. Um, and it was so cool because we were sitting alongside Michelle Beadle. Like she's an, an icon in herself. So um, just to be able to be a part of that with other women who are also, you know, pioneering in, in their designated sports. Cause I was there representing basketball. We had a girl there representing volleyball, another one representing soccer. Like it was just so cool to see such a unique experience to be a part of and a, a good growing experience, you know, like I had never done something like that. So, um, I really enjoyed it. And I think if anything, it just confirmed, like, this is exactly what I want to be doing for sure. Living the dream as cliche as it sounds, but living the dream, getting to call some of your favorite sports and then of course get paid for it, pay the bills and, and to travel mm -hmm. and, and experience all that. Um, how, how good has it been? Cause obviously, you know, working with the winning organization, the vibe's different, you know, it's mm -hmm. not like, Oh, like the team's losing and you know, the morale's down. How has that been? Like you said, when you started there and then their growth, not just in your position, but the team all around, how has that experience been? Um, I think that in itself is, is such a huge blessing. I certainly don't take that for granted because I do, there's been times when I've, sat by myself and I'm like, wow, like out of all of the places that I could have possibly like ended up in, you know, I ended up in Edinburgh, Texas, working for a team that at the time had already won two championships. They were already very well established. Uh, they were actually in the process of building a new arena and, and moving into this new arena. So um, it's, it's been absolutely phenomenal. There's if there's one thing about, you know, just being a part of this G League team is that it's given me the opportunity to really um, work in different roles and wear multiple hats. And I think that's extremely important. Why? Because it, it really opened my eyes to realize, OK, this is what I like. This is what I don't like. This is what I'm good at. These are my strengths. These are my weaknesses. And, you know, the G League does that. Why? Primarily because, unfortunately, you know, in comparison to our NBA team, we are understaffed. So we are required to to hold roles that perhaps you don't necessarily like. But because you are understaffed, you know, you have to help out the organization. So 
again, it gave me the opportunity and it's continuing to give me the opportunity just to kind of fine tune, um, you know, the areas that I feel like I can continue to grow in, develop in. And then at the same time, just confirm certain things that I'm like, yeah, the more that I do this, the more I realize I'm like, no, this, this is not for me, you know? So, um, which is not a bad thing. I feel like everybody has to go through that at some point in time. Um, and then they're, they're very successful. Like I don't take that for granted. Like I could have easily ended up on another G league team that perhaps has never won a championship and I would never be able to experience that. And I don't take that for granted. I feel Actually, that might be the one area in my life that I feel like the luckiest because I would be lying if I said that, you know, these opportunities wouldn't have come for me. One, had I not created them for myself, because the reality is that, you know, I was not hired to be a sideline reporter. I was not hired to be a a digital host. Like, I took it upon myself. I saw that nobody was doing it. And I figured, hey, like, I want to do it, you know, I want to be able to elevate um, an organization's broadcast that clearly people are watching, you know, clearly people are tuning into how can I add to it? How can I make it better? Um, And they're winning. So that's not only, you know, helping the organization continue to um, promote itself, continue to market itself, market itself, continue to gain fans. But at the same time, it gives me the perfect platform to just be noticed. You know, I feel like especially people who aspire to do these types of roles and so forth. You know, you have to be at the right place at the right time because the reality is that, you know, this profession is extremely competitive. So um, for those reasons, I feel very lucky to be covering um, the Vipers. Let's just say you're ahead of the curve, right? Like, yeah, especially with all the the social media and how it's just taken off. Um, Mm -hmm. And and. With all due respect, you busted your butt to get to where you're at. And that's a great thing. That is a great thing that that's that's taking place. And and it's so cool to see, like, like just the different dynamics, because you got the best seat in the house, right? Yeah, you know, for you're, sure. <laughs> you're right there and you get to see some of the future talents that are playing out there. Um, and it's just so cool. It's so cool to it's so cool to watch and, and see and have that opportunity. Um side note, have you got to see a uh, Wembley yet? Uh, in in any practices or anything leading up to it in, during the so I actually saw um, Victor over the summer during summer league so mm-hmm. that's when he made his um, debut debut um, I was able to to attend that game and then I was able to attend I want to say two of those games um, the first he's game tall. where he no, he's tall right super oh he's tall. Active. super tall he's <laughs> and even the the let me tell you this because we have media passes like when we go to summer league right that obviously gives you access to media but the post game interview access to him was insane you would have thought they were giving out like free donuts free you know something because it was it was absolutely ridiculous nobody unless you were like espn Fox Sports, Anscape, um, Bleacher Report, like really there to like cover him because you had like a story to write about him or you're covering, for example, Michelle Beadle, she covers the San Antonio Spurs. So she was allowed to be in there. But only if you had, in other words, like deadlines, you know, to, to write a piece specifically on him, were you actually allowed to be in that room? Everybody else was like, literally just watching from the outside so that was something that that was my um third summer league that i had attended um back to back you know and i had never witnessed that before which i thought was was super unique um and me and my actually my co-workers we went to um a San Antonio, San Antonio Spurs and Rockets preseason game. We were so excited. Obviously, we work for, you know, the Vipers, but ask us why we were all like, let's go, Spurs. Yeah, you got to, you got to. Like, just don't wear the Viper shirt or the. the- <laughs> I know, right? That's so funny, specifically because of um, Victor. 
our our social media manager he's so funny like i love him his name is oscar and he's very like um very quiet and to himself but he showed up real bold with like the san antonio spurs um hoodie i was like wow out of all people i would have never expected you to be this rebellious rocking the the san antonio waiting, he was waiting for that moment i know but he didn't play he I didn't know. play and you know what's so funny is i told them i was like i i feel like i jinxed it because i was like guys he's not gonna play like there's no way they're gonna play him right now they're like what do you mean fred van vliet is playing like um he for sure is gonna be playing like he has to be playing um dylan brooks was even playing but no he didn't play he did not play but he was there so we got to see the back of his head <laughs> right which is nice <laughs> and, and that's that's which is it is and of course it was, pre, it was preseason hopefully hopefully he can stay healthy and, and attend those games like and so people can get a look at that they're seeing the next, yeah for sure the, the next superstar on there i, I just remember very seeing unique that for, talent i remember seeing that very photo great. where he he makes kevin durant look normal on height mm -hmm. wise and it's like whoa <laughs> i think there's a picture of him and and rudy gobert and even rudy looks little you know so um yeah i mean i'm excited to see him i'm excited to see you know how his body changes too i'm sure they have him you know on a particular diet I, you look at him and, and you you almost see Giannis when Giannis first got to the league you know what i mean so um he's that muscle he's gonna get that muscle and yeah we'll see but then you have people like kevin durant who has just always just been lean you know like you've never seen kevin durant with those type of you know muscles you you just haven't um so i don't know we'll, we'll see how his body kind of transforms and so forth but um what he's able to do even now is just incredible so he's going to be exciting to to watch that is awesome so going into it uh who are some of the key players for your your vipers that that you're most excited because the season's already here, about to be underway correct yes you guys are in pre so we already started oh, yeah you already started, our, right yes on the road they were two back-to-back -back games um we had our two back-to-back -back games just this weekend friday and saturday against the memphis hustle um we won one we lost one which is very typical for us when it comes to this team it, it never fails that we always play memphis hustle back-to-back -back, whether that's in memphis or here in edinburgh and um, we always win one, we always lose one. We can never win both. I find that so interesting. It's gotta be but, a balance. Um, it's a balance. I guess, yeah, I guess, definitely. Um, but I'm most excited for sure for our three-way players or our three two-way players, I'm sorry. Um, I was not you know, expecting for them to add the third two-way. So I think that in itself is gonna be very exciting. You know, it just, it adds more manpower to the already very stacked roster that we had. And something that's so unique about us that um, I haven't seen in the time that I've been here, this is now gonna be my seventh season with the Vipers and I've never seen this before, but we actually have seven returners coming back from last season, which- really? Seven? Seven, wow. yes, wow. which is, um, unique in itself like i said last year we had two returners this year we have seven so um clearly coach burleson has one thing on his mind which is winning you know because for him to bring back almost half of his roster from last year um i can see i can see him wanting to definitely go back you know this team for sure has a chip on its shoulder um you know where we're used to winning and when you're used to winning you don't like to lose and i even have this conversation with my coworkers because when we weren't into um the finals we were actually an eighth seed i want to say like we were we were not that team okay like we were not that team so we started off really rough so for us to make it all the way to the end you know, me and my coworkers were like, I don't know what's worse. Is it losing the championship game or not even making it to the finals? You know, personally, I'd rather have not even made it to the finals because being so close and losing in a championship game, uh, it, it, it stung, you know, um, I didn't like that feeling at all. Right. So um, again, it's going to be exciting to see 
what it's early on you know it's definitely early i don't want to speak too too soon because a lot of these players also you know they can get called up they can get um god it's forbid traded. but injured traded exactly um something that's very exciting though that i, I really do hope um uh, that we have him at least for a significant amount of time is cam whitmore so we had him yeah we had him um both Friday and Saturday. And, and I mean, he's only 19 years old, but he is a human highlight reel. Like he had a crazy dunk on Saturday. It was so funny because he had this crazy dunk and our social media person posted like the, the highlight on, on, on Twitter, but the announcer like was so excited. Like he was like, Cam Whitmore, like he was so excited. Now I was watching this game live um and when you're watching it live on youtube you can like comment and a bunch of like memphis hustle fans were like who are you like commenting for like are you are you for the vipers team i thought you were a memphis hustle broadcaster like they were basically calling him out which i thought was hilarious because well i mean it was a good play he got excited it was right? a very good play <laughs> and he flew too because like i was like oh my god he like flew from like the three the uh the free point line and he just went totally dunked it like incredibly i was like oh my god like it, it was insane it was insane just to see his his body how athletic he is and so forth like i said only 19 years old um i don't know how long we'll have him right so i don't want to i guess get too attached right. um <laughs> Yeah, because he's an assignee. So that's the difference between him and the two-way. Like, he's an assignee. So um, his time here is, is you know, basically, we don't know what his time is here. He right. could easily be taken at any Anytime. moment. He could, yeah, and he can literally be taken the day of, you know, hours before. So um, it's, it's not too good to get too attached to, you know, an assignee. But, um I'm excited. And you know who else I'm excited for? Tell so me, tell I'm me. a huge Baylor fan. I'm a huge Baylor Bear fan. We have Matthew Mayer. Do you remember? Did you ever watch? Um, did you watch the season when when Baylor won um, the championship? Just briefly, just briefly. OK, yeah. So there was this player um, uh, by the name of Matthew Mayer who was a part of that squad and um, most recognizable because he had a mullet at the time like a full-on mullet and that's because we had a scrimmage with the vipers i want to say like about two like a week and a half ago um and i kept looking at this guy and i was like where have i seen this guy before i, seen I remember even telling <laughs> no he doesn't have a mullet oh, right he doesn't now. have it anymore okay. no he doesn't have a mullet but i kept telling my 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 co-worker rick i was like i feel like i've seen this guy somewhere like his name sounds so familiar to me and and oh my god he can shoot the three okay he's he has length to him but he can shoot the three and so it wasn't until i went home and i was like no i've seen this guy somewhere and i got on my phone yada 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 i was like oh my god it is matthew mayer he just doesn't have a mullet but then at um the game that we had uh the back to backs that we had friday and saturday i was like hey i think he's starting to grow out the mullet again so if the mullet comes back oh i feel uh, like he's just gonna he's gonna be lethal okay let me tell that, you lethal. got that mojo back with the mullet right yes <laughs> i think that's all that's missing he just needs to go back to the mullet all right well let's see hopefully hopefully his team lets him and they're not like the yankees where you got to be clean shaven and, and a clean haircut on there let them no let them i think themselves. coach burleson will as long as we're winning you know what i mean i think coach burleson will let him do whatever makes him feel the most comfortable for sure what, what's what's cool it looks like you guys got the the theme coming off of last year of unfinished business right mm -hmm. coach burleson's ready he's like that like you said that 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 loss stung right and yeah he, and he wants to he wants to get it back you know get get it back and hey going for what is it one for the thumb ain't bad yes <laughs> yes one for the thumb ain't bad at all now tell us about your new project that's gonna be it's already gonna be happening right um mm -hmm. go ahead and let people know it's great great thing another like you said you're just keep elevating the bar and 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 moving up to a new level so let folks know what what you got in the mix 
For sure. So um, the G League here recently signed a deal with Tubi. Um, Tubi is basically a streaming platform where you can watch live TV for free. Um, there's actually no subscription that is necessary for Tubi. Um, I like to compare Tubi a lot to like um, other streaming platforms, you know, where you can watch live TV, Peacock, Hulu. Um, the only difference is, you know, on those streaming platforms, uh, you do have to pay a subscription. And for Tubi, you don't have to. You basically watch live TV for, for free. So now the G League um, has its own channel on there, the G League TV channel. Um, and they've given me the opportunity to now be the host of my own show. So uh, that's really exciting. It's called The Call Up with April Marie. It'll be airing once a month um throughout their duration of the season i just um released episode one or episode one i should say was released over the weekend um it aired both saturday and sunday uh we got a really good response from it and so forth so uh, i'm excited this is just um i guess you can say almost like a a blessing in disguise um i did not see this coming whatsoever so um i know that this is only definitely the beginning and um just the opportunity to kind of create projects that i'm passionate about um they're they're giving me you know the liberty to kind of create this from the bottom up so um even the name i got to come up with the name um the call up just kind of i feel like even represents my journey um personally um i love underdogs you know i love a good underdog story i love the struggle i love people who can you know take certain circumstances uh that might not be the best but then turn them into you know something good something positive so um my show really emphasizes on that is is finding those um stories around the league of of those players like i said who aspire to make it to the nba or perhaps have made it to the nba you know got a taste for it won a championship there but then now find themselves back in the g league like you know life has its ups and downs but the story of the call-up is really like how how do you you know um overcome it how do you overcome it and and how do you get back you know, to to the top of the mountain, really, and, and finding success. So, um, again, I'm super excited, super blessed. Um, I'm excited to see where this ultimately goes. You know, uh, I've never done something like this before. So, uh, again, this is just another opportunity to continue to, to grow, to develop, you know, as an individual. So, so yeah, definitely tune in. <laughs> It's great. Like you see, see which new adventures you get to, you know, participate in, like, in, like sure. I said, the platform that you're on. So everybody, again, that's to the Tubi network, a streaming platform. You can watch the call up with April Marie at once a month. Episode one is already out now, which is good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to go and find me some time so I can watch that there. Um, as we as we wind it down, can we let uh, let everybody know where they can follow you, the Raptors and, of course, uh, your show again? Yeah, for sure. So you guys can follow me on Instagram. Uh, that's aprilmarie.tv. You can also follow me um, on threads, on Twitter. On Twitter, I'm at Heels on Hardwood. Um, and for sure, definitely follow the Vipers page. You'll see a lot of the stuff that that um, we'll be doing. I'm also doing a lot of cool projects um, with the Vipers this upcoming season. So you're going to want to check that out. Um, and their IG is at RGV Vipers. So again, I'm so excited. Uh, thanks so much for even taking the time to to interview me. I appreciate it's good. that. It's good. Like I said, basketball's back. I know football's still in full swing uh, mm -hmm. NFL wise, but it's it's that crazy period when there's multiple sports that are going on at the same time. And it is. If, if, it if is. You're, if you're a sports fan, you gotta love it. I mean, you can watch. You basketball, have to. You know, got soccer you got you know hockey's in in, in full mm -hmm. swing college uh, basketball i'm obsessed with college basketball college basketball is is, is crazy too uh utep uh, pulled up a good win last night i here. saw that last um, night so it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be good so if you're a sports fan you can't complain there there's a bunch of sports on yeah. there 
And there's already starting to be some upsets, and I'm like, dang, it's not even March yet. Like, how exactly. is this? Exactly. Well, L- LSU, right? I mean, LSU on the women's side, you know, mm-hmm. we and mm-hmm. we just, I, I wish, you know, the WNBA had their league a little bit different, maybe if kind of fell in a little bit later, but mm-hmm. I understand why. But shout out to the Aces out there in Vegas, um, you know, for pulling I know. that off right there. Even the um, who, who was it? Uh, UConn fell to NC State on Saturday. That was huge. Cool. And what, what's cool is, like, if they played the game on paper, okay, it is what it is. But you got to still – that ball is going to be, you know, uh, tossed mm-hmm. up right there. And let's see where the ball lies, you know. And, that, and yeah. that's the beauty of it. That is the beauty of it and everything in For sports. For sure. So, so, April, like I said, I appreciate you coming out on our very first episode, episode one here of The Rebound. Like I said, we're proud of you, everything that you guys are doing, and just, you know, the adventures. Yeah. I can't, can't wait to see the new adventures on there, especially with the show – um so folks again go ahead and follow april marie at april marie.tv and you mm-hmm. can find her also on uh, her other socials uh, at heels on hardwood which i love that name by the way um <laughs> thank and, you and, and of course her show the call up on tubi so for myself and april marie oh there goes Artie. we'd like to thank you guys for joining us on this first episode of the rebound Tune for more here at the EP Sports Network.